Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. Uh, welcome to today's video, which is 10 things I wish I knew before I got married. I feel like I just need to say this before every video. I don't say these things because I think I know it all or think I'm an expert. That is by no means what I'm trying to convey to you guys. Honestly, I'm learning and I'm growing every day, but I feel like these 10 things would have helped a lot. We're about to post some videos with Tate on my channel and we kind of get into this, but we had some rough patches in our marriage simply because we didn't know what we were doing. I thought I'd get on here and just share a couple things that I wish I knew. I wish somebody sat me down and told me before I got married. So make sure you like and subscribe. I ask you to do that because it really supports my channel and helps me grow in the algorithm. So that's why I ask you guys that. I appreciate it so much and let's get started. Number one, comparison. Comparison is the thief of joy and I am an example of that because I went into our marriage wanting to be like all these other marriages that I saw, whether it's on Instagram or in the family or in my friend circle. That hurt us so badly. I wish someone just looked me in the eye and said, Margaret, whatever you do, don't compare yourself to other people. I just needed to understand that the more we dove into our uniqueness as a couple, because we are unique and our lifestyle is unique, the better off we're gonna be. And we're on year five and I feel like we're just scratching the surface of doing that and it's massively different. It's like so much better. Number two, don't be afraid of counseling. I was. I was totally afraid of counseling. I thought it was kind of taboo and meant that you had a lot to work through and you were really struggling, but that's not the case. There were many instances where uh, kind of Tate started us off on this route and said, why don't we go talk to a third party so they can help us kind of take our emotions out of the equation and talk about something that we just can't settle. I really feel like relationships go like this and when we're down here, we just need someone to be like, all right, this is what you guys are thinking, this is what you're saying, this is what you're saying, let's smooth it out. So helpful. Three, taking care of myself. For the amount of time that I've known Tate, I have been on my health journey, but it wasn't until I started really diving into what healthy living looks like, not just being skinny, because honestly, I was never happy, I was never fully healed or myself when I was just wanting to be skinny. But when I started healthy living as a whole, our relationship got better. Bar none, that is, that is, what's the word I'm looking for? That is it. <laughs> when one of you is struggling, you kind of both struggle together. Uh, so I work really hard on being the healthiest, physically, mentally, spiritual version of myself. Four, laugh. Oh my goodness, laughter is so important. My babysitter growing up, Every time I came home and was like, I like this boy, first thing she would say is, does he make you laugh? And most of them were like, no, until I started dating Tate. I was like, yeah, he makes me laugh. But on top of that, you have to be intentional about doing things together that make you laugh. Watching a funny movie, watching funny TikToks together, we do that and we laugh a lot. YouTubes, going to Top Golf, playing hilarious games, mini golf. We even play cards together and that's pretty funny. I don't know, I don't know if cards are funny, but we find it pretty comical. So just do things that lighten the load and take your mind off of the everyday stressors. Number five, ooh, where's my folder? Number five, the wife project. This is the journal prompt that comes with it, but essentially it's an eight week program that walks you through how to be an intentional wife, the wife that God designed you to be. I did the wife project over the last eight weeks because I feel like I needed to prepare for another baseball season. I was kind of floored that I've never, one, heard of this, never done something like this, and third, I was floored at how unintentional for being an intentional living YouTuber, how unintentional I've been about my marriage. We're not in a rough patch, we're actually doing really well, but I feel like the Wife Project is a huge reason for that because it kind of just turn my brain on to start thinking more intentionally about my marriage. So it's an eight week program. Lindsay Maestas gives you videos of her kind of just like giving you a devotional and then gives you, which is my favorite part, a 52 page wife project journal. How easy is it to go through every day, whether you're in a good place in your marriage or a tough place in your marriage, it's so easy to just go through the motions and not really think about much. Here's a couple things that I just loved about the Wife Project that I wanted to tell you guys about, and then I'll move on to number six. One, she gives you a lot of intentional writing prompts. She even gives you like specific prayers to pray and to write out for your husband, conversation topics like 
one or two instances where I served you really well this week and where you felt really loved or scripture memorization for the marriage and I thought that was such a good thing for me to start working on. She even gave you like, I don't know, maybe 15 bullet proof list of date night ideas. Just so many things. I love what she's doing because she's trying to set up a culture for success, a culture that's kind of known for divorce. I believe that percentage is maybe like 41% of marriages end in divorces or something like that. So she's trying to set us up for success and I feel like she succeeded. Couldn't recommend this more. I'll put the link below just in case you guys wanna look at it. But let's get to number six. Power of prayer. Pretty simple, but I didn't do this for the first couple years, probably out of just being lazy. But I was given a book called The Power of the Praying Wife. It was one page of a prayer each night that I did probably for two months. And it was a new prayer every single night for Tate. And that made me look at him differently, made me look at our marriage differently and made my relationship with Christ kind of expand into a whole nother level just by praying for my husband. It's such a simple thing to do, but it really made me feel closer to God, it made me feel closer to Tate. Seven. <laughs> It's one that I would admit I was just really bad at and it was trying to change Tate, trying to morph him into the version of him that I wanted and a lot of that had to do with his style, his health, the way he you know, had conversations and his manners, all of these things I was trying to change but it wasn't until I just accepted him for who he was and loved even the parts of him that I thought were crazy like how he wears maroon one shade of maroon on top of another shade of maroon with his camo Crocs. But it was me choosing to look at him and say, wow, gosh, I love you. Instead of being like, are you seriously wearing that again? Because I did that. Really sorry, Tate. I'm in a really happy place where I don't even feel those feelings anymore. I'm like, you're rocking it today and you feel confident, don't you? Mm -hmm. So it's fun, it's way more fun that way. Number eight, keeping my mouth shut. Similar to number seven. Have you seen my big fat Greek wedding where the mother of the you know Greek family says, the man is the head, but the woman is the neck. And she can turn the head any way she wants. I feel like I turned his head so much that I gave him whiplash a little bit. Your girl's got a lot of opinions, okay? And I want to protect him and I want to help him. And Tate is probably the person who taught me this the most, is that people listen to you better when you're not talking. So essentially, I needed to stop trying to turn his neck, tell him what to do, and just start listening, especially with his career. Listening was the best thing I could do for him. And honestly, I really believe he is a healthy eater now. He dresses really cute, and it's because I just kind of let him do his thing and figure it out for himself. And hopefully I can do that with my kids. Hopefully. Okay, number nine is gratitude journaling. It kind of doesn't have to do with marriage but it is something that i started doing in 2020 and it just changed my outlook on everything including the way i view tate and here's how i can relate this to marriage is that in the morning this is actually my everything journal and i grad i write my gratitude stuff in here one dollar at target just so you know i fill out an entire page of gratitude like what i'm grateful for it kind of goes down to 15 bullet points and almost every single day, I'm saying something that I'm grateful for about Tate and the benefits that come from thinking and reflecting and meditating on the positive things of him really helped me because I have a tendency to hold grudges and hold on to things that are bothering me. What you focus on grows. We learned that in counseling. And what I'm focusing on here is the good parts of him and it just is growing. My adoration for him has grown immensely. I feel like our marriage is the best it's been ever. And I'm not saying it's because I'm doing all these things right. I'm still failing every day, but these things are helping so much. And I really think gratitude was one of the main tools that helped me let go of the negative things. And then lastly, compliments. Compliments are a very fun part of marriage because of how much you love getting compliments. Just think about that when you are complimenting somebody else. For instance, Tate the other night, I watched him play his baseball game and he looked like a snack in his baseball pants. And so I told him that. I, he calls me on his way home every single night and I picked up the phone and I was like, mm, you looked really nice tonight on my little computer screen. It was really fuzzy. 
because I couldn't come to the game because our kids are really, really difficult in the baseball stadium, but you looked good. <laughs> Little things here and there, it doesn't have to be a big compliment. He's playing with our kids the other night and I was like, honestly, you playing with our kids makes me want to cry. It just makes me so happy. Or you did the dishes for me tonight and that just lifted a huge burden off of me. Thank you. Just little affirmations, compliments here and there, really build him up and he'll dish it back. He will. Okay, that completes my list of 10. I hope this wasn't boring to you guys. I also want to know what you guys think you should add to this list because I think everyone can benefit from reading more things that'll help their marriage because we really want to set each other up for success, right? We want a flourishing culture. And that really starts with good, healthy marriages. Thank you for being here, you guys. And uh, please make sure you like and subscribe. It means so much to me, you have no idea. And your comments, your encouragement means so much to me. Truly, you don't know, you know, how that makes me get up in the morning. So thank you, and I'll see you guys in my next video.